Hello and welcome to my first painting video of 2023. In this video, I'll be painting the kill team called The Blooded, a vicious warband of traitor guardsmen led by a vicious enforcer, or what used to be a commissar, and a chaos ogren. Such awesome sculpts, and I'm going to try out some new techniques here. Let's begin, shall we? First, I want to play around with different colored zenithal highlights. I spray Elysian green on all the guardsmen from above. The Enforcer and Ogren are getting their own color. Next, I spray Stegadon skill green on the Enforcer from above. As you might have guessed, I'm picking out the main color of all the models with these zenithals. The Ogren gets a zenithal of Rekarth flesh from above. I figured Black Shadows might be a bit boring, so I'm spraying Nagaroth Knight from a downward angle after the fact. I really like how the models are looking here. I should have sprayed the models in Nagaroth Knight first, but this also works. I'll focus on the Guardsmen first. Although I used a green base coat, I want their armor to look like they sprayed their armor black, with the original color showing through. First, I shade all the armor with Ethonian Camo Shade. This dirties down the armor, but still gives it a green hue. Next, I layer on Elysian green on all the areas that are hit with light. Because of the zenithal highlight, it is very easy to see where the paint goes. I repeat the process with Ogren camo, but add this as a highlight, so I make sure the previous layer is still showing. I also make some edge highlights where appropriate. Now to try something I've never tried before, chipping medium. I paint up the armor and let it dry before adding Black Templar. You can already see a cool effect where the Black Templar isn't really catching on onto the chipping medium. It looks really nice. I end up scratching at the black layer. You can either do this with a wet brush, but I just decided on doing some battle damage scratches. Okay, so this was my first attempt, but the other guardsmen already looked a lot better. First time trying chipping medium and it is very interesting. The uniforms they are wearing, I paint with Zandri dust. Here, I'm also picking out all the green areas, leaving the purple shadows intact. This gives an interesting effect when you water the paints down a bit. I layer on Karak stone, bringing out the highlights. And I repeat highlighting with a mix of Karak stone and Eusepti bone. As you can see here, this gives a very interesting look. I realize this isn't probably everyone's taste, but it's an experiment. Well, let's pick out some details next. I forgot to film the first step where I paint all the leather belts and pouches with Saigor Brown. Here you can see me highlighting them with Thondia Brown. I end with a highlight of Gorthor Brown. I again keep it to the parts that are hit with light. All the wrappings I paint with Skeleton Horde. This contrast paint doesn't cover very well, but it's actually no issue because... I highlight the wrapping with Yusapti Bone. Slowly but surely, the overall green mini is starting to look a lot more detailed. 
I do like the effect it gives with the different colored base coat instead of the usual white or gray. All the metal on the models I paint with basiliconum gray. Then I add two highlights for a non-metallic look. First I add administratum gray. And I end with a highlight of Ulthan Grey. All the brass, like bullets and icons, I paint with snakebite leather. I layer on Habgrad Hide and highlight with Dorn Yellow. The wooden stocks on the last rifles I paint with Wildwood Contrast Paint. I haven't used real metallic paints in a while, but I personally like how this looks. You could slightly dry brush a very light silver on the metal to give it a more metallic shine if you prefer that. These boys are going to look a bit on the rugged side, so I'm painting the skin with Rekarth Flesh. Again, I'm only painting the green areas, which is an indicator where the light will hit. I shade the skin with Druki Violet. Then layer on a mix of Rekarth Flesh and Palette Wish Flesh. And I end with a final highlight of Palette Wish Flesh. Some of the guardsmen are a little bit cold and they have these comfy looking fur rags. I paint these with Gore Guntra fur. Dry brush on some Scrag Brown. And dry brush on some Deathclaw Brown for the highlight. The coat of the Enforcer I want to paint in a deep midnight blue. The zenitho on this model wasn't very clear unfortunately, so you'll have to determine where the highlights will go. Next I layer on Stegadon scale green on the coat, leaving the previous layer still showing. I repeat this process with Dark Reaper. I keep making these layers smaller and smaller. Finally, I end up with a highlight of Thunderhawk Blue. And boom! Finished Enforcer! The Hell Putrid Painter, are we skipping steps now? Nope, I actually use all the steps that I've already used on my Guardsman on this model as well. Except for the red, but I'll get to that in a bit. Mind that his pants are also painted in the same way as the coat. On to the big guy. First I'll have a look at that monstrous claw of his. I paint this with the Volipus pink. I'm careful not to hit the teeth. Next I shade the entire skin and the monstrous claw with a watered down Druki Violet. The claw and other mutations you might be painting get a highlight of Pink Horror. And a highlight of Emperor's Children. With the skin, I'm bringing back the Rekarth flesh on all the raised areas. Then I add a big highlight with a mix of Rekarth flesh and Palace Witch flesh. I end up with giving everything, the skin and mutations, a highlight of Palace Witch flesh to bring it all together. I also wanted the Ogren to look sickly, but slightly different than the Guardsman. 
Because of the original Zenithal base coat, he does look a bit different. Right, on to some final touches and the base. Okay, so you've already seen the red on the Enforcer, but I called this finishing touches, so I had to do it at the end of the video. I paint random shapes or chaos sigils with corn red. Then I highlight them with Evil Sun Scarlet. And highlight again with Wild Rider Red. Adding red to the armor makes for a nice spot color on the models. And it makes them look a lot more evil with just one color. I did do a layer of streaking grime on the first model. But with the other guardsmen I actually was a lot more selective mainly focusing on the uniform and the weapons. Wipe away all the streaky grime with a sponge and white spirit, so it's only left in the recesses. Now I want to bring all the models together and let them walk around in a Space Hulk. First I paint the base with Iron Warriors. And any detail I want, I paint with Balthazar Gold. I add a thick shade of Nuln Oil. And a lighter shade of Agrax Earth Shade, just enough to stain the metallic colors. I dry brush everything with Rune Fang Steel. Mostly focusing on areas which do not directly fall beneath the models. And I end with painting the rim of the base with Corvus Black. And here we have a bunch of dirty heretics. I really like the Trader Guard models ever since they got released with Blackstone Fortress. And I'm happy I'm finally able to paint them in Kill Team. Although I did paint them pretty uniform, by using the red spot color in various shapes and symbols, they do look like a band of soldiers that kind of grab some random war gear from the battlefield. For my next video, I'm going to paint up some models for a brand new Age of Sigmar army, Witch Elves. In the meantime, be sure to check out my Instagram, where I post pictures of current projects and behind the scenes stuff. But for now, thanks for watching.